Hi, my name is Joko and welcome to our channel where we talk about all things trucking and we give interesting tips and tricks for drivers just like yourself. Today we will talk about the hours of service regulations and how we present them to our drivers here at TRX Express. But if you are a veteran driver and you've been driving for a while now, you've been on the road for a while, you know that DOT changes the uh, hours of service rules quite a bit. So if you want to stay on top of these uh, rules and regulations, just go to DOT's website and you know you can read about them uh, there. Let's start off with the 14-hour rule. The 14-hour rule states that each driver has 14 hours available to work as long as those 14 hours are preceded by 10 consecutive hours of sleeper berth or off-duty. That means simply that you can work for 14 hours in a day as long as you had a 10 hour sleeper berth break or you came off of your restart. Now in those 14 hours, each driver has 11 hours of driving time. The remaining three hours are left for uh, you know, on-duty statuses such as uh, fuel, loading, unloading, uh, DOT inspections, etc. Everything that you're doing, pre-trip inspections, let's not forget about that. So everything that you're doing while you are you know, around the truck, except you know, sleeping or taking time off. In those 11 hours, each driver has to perform a 30 minute break within the first eight hours of driving. Think of it as an eight hour timer where you have to take a 30 minute break by the time the timer runs out so that you can reset the timer. So let me, let me give you a few examples. Scenario number one, let's just say a driver has a 10 hour long trip to drive. He does the PTI in the morning, you know, gets all ready. He departs and drives for eight continuous hours. Immediately, this driver is in violation and could be cited by a DOT officer. Scenario number two, Let's say a driver has an 11 hour long trip and uh, you know, he does the PTI in the morning. He drives for about a, an hour in the morning and then does a 30 minute break. Nothing wrong there. He then continues driving for another hour and does a second 30 minute break. At, at this point, the driver has nine hours of drive time remaining to his destination, which means that he's supposed to make another 30 minute break until he gets to pick up or delivery or whatever it is. This driver is forced to make a third 30 minute break, which may cause him or her to either miss their appointment uh, for pickup, for delivery, and then it has to be rescheduled and it just complicates things. So it makes them not arrive on time at their destination. And example number three, we have a uh, you know, driver which has an 11 hour long trip and uh, he drives for about six hours then does a 30 minute break and drives the rest to the end to his destination where he arrived on time. What we can conclude from all three examples is that driver number one, he's actually in violation because he did not take a break, a 30 minute break. Driver number two did make it to the destination but was late because he took way too many breaks. So his or her appointment had to be rescheduled. Driver number three made it on time and there were no, no complications whatsoever at his destination. Not only is the third driver on time with no rescheduling uh, complications, he's also, uh, according to the DOT regulations, which state that you have to take a break within the first eight hours of driving of at least 30 minutes. Which brings me to the next point. Over the road drivers are allowed to work 70 hours per week. The 70 hours is a sum of the on-duty status, the driving hours, and the yard moves. Now, we talked about each driver having to have 10 consecutive hours of sleeper berth or off-duty status before being able to drive the 14-hour rule. There are certain exceptions to that. And two of the exceptions are the 7-3 split and the 8-2 split. Let me give you some examples. Uh, matter of fact, the 7-3 uh, split means that a driver can sleep for seven hours before resuming 
his uh, duty status. But then after a while, he has to do a three hour break so that in total he still has or she still has the 10 hours of sleeper birth or off duty. Let me give you an example of why and how you can use that to your advantage because we've had drivers trying to use the split. They didn't know how it applies to their case. So let me, let me talk about that a little bit. Let's say a driver has a 11 hour trip ahead. Uh, due to inclement weather, accidents, you know, all these things may happen on the road, uh, traffic. The driver is unable to drive the entire 11 hours that day and get to his or her destination. Now, that driver drove only for, let's say, eight hours that day, okay? So, which means they have only three hours remaining to, to their destination. That driver may do a 7-3 or a 2 split meaning after the 11 uh, after the eight hours of driving he can go to bed so the driver may wake up after seven or eight hours continue driving make it to their destination but at their destination they must do the remaining three or two hours respectively so if they did a seven hour sleeper they they have to do a three hour sleeper or off duty at the destination they cannot continue driving before they have done the three hours or two respectively like i said example number two let's just say that a driver again has 11 hours of driving you know gets to the destination so this driver has 11 hours of driving now this driver is unable to make the seven hour or eight hour split because they've used up all of their driving hours if they do a seven three or eight two split they will go into uh, into violation. Let me clarify. You may only do a 7-3 or 8-2 split if you have remaining driving hours from the previous day. Now, even in that case, sometimes you may not be able to do a 7-3 or 8-2 split. So your best bet would be contact your dispatch or safety department and ask them just for reassurance. General rule of thumb, if you don't have any driving hours from the previous day, you cannot do a split. Now let's talk about what kind of information, what needs to be put on your ELDs or electronic logbook device. First of all, make sure you have also paper logbooks in your truck because sometimes ELDs don't function, they don't work, batteries go out, whatever, for whatever reason they won't work. So you wanna make sure that you have paper logbooks at all times with you. They are probably in the binder that the company gave you. So just make sure that they're there because if you don't have them, you may get a violation and a citation by a DOT officer. Now to continue, what kind of info needs to be put in the ELD? First and foremost, you need to update your shipping and trailer information. What does that mean? Every time you pick up a new load, hook up a new trailer, do a, you know, a preloaded trailer, or even hook up to an empty trailer, you know, after dropping your old trailer, you need to update the trailer number on the ELD to make sure that whatever you have, you are hooked on is also on the ELD. Secondly, if you are picking up a load or, or if you have hooked up to a preloaded trailer, make sure that the bill of lading number uh, or any type of information that is on the bill of lading is also put into the ELD so that when you get pulled over by a DOT officer, you don't get a citation or a violation for missing information on the ELD. And not only that, violations are not good because they simply aren't. And uh, you know, the company that you work for may find you as well. So nobody likes giving out money for no reason. So, and it's a stupid mistake anyway, if you make it. Just, just put in the shipping info and update the trailer info as well. Second, DVIRs, Driver Vehicle Inspection Reports. While you're doing your pre-trip or post-trip inspections, if you find any defects or malfunctions with your truck or trailer, you need to mark that down. You need to write up the report so that if you do get pulled up uh, by an officer, they see that you saw the mistake, the defect or whatever, and that you are going to resolve it somehow. You'll take it to the mechanic. You'll bring the truck or trailer to HQ so that the mechanics can take a look at it. They need to know that you are on top of things. If you don't write it down and a DOT officer finds it, you know, that's a violation. Uh, worst case, if you don't write it down, our mechanics, dispatch, safety, whoever will not know of the defect and they cannot attend to it. So the truck or trailer may 
break down again in the future. We don't want that. We want to keep our drivers running. So if there is anything wrong with the truck or trailer, you need to write up the driver vehicle inspection report so that everybody you know, can be notified and things can be taken care of. Now let's talk about the status changes. Uh, you know, when we put the truck uh, in yard move, PC or on duty. First of all, PC or personal conveyance is only to be used for personal use. If you are under dispatch, meaning you are carrying a load or you know, you're know you going to a pickup or to a delivery, if you're under dispatch, you may not use PC. That may get you in trouble. You may not use PC to advance to your pickup or delivery after you have run out of driving hours. That's an immediate violation. And it's actually uh, DOT may suspend you for that. They may put you out of service. Due to the fact that personal conveyance is abused by drivers you know, to advance to pickups or deliveries, it is extremely frowned upon uh, by DOT officers. So that's why if you could avoid using a uh, PC, uh, unless you really have to use it to get to the nearest safe haven, you know, truck stop, rest area, whatever place it is where you need to sleep if you're running out of hours, but plan in advance. That's where planning, you know, organizational skills and time management come into play. So make sure that you plan well in advance. Next is yard move. When you are within a company that, you know, has a lot of docks and you need to move within the company to get to your dock, you know, instead of using driving time, you may use yard move to get to your dock. Yard move is a status change that does not take from your driving hours, but it does take from your 14 hours available for that day. You know, make sure you use it wisely. And uh, the other thing with yard move is you need to manually change the, the status from yard move to driving before you leave the shipper or receiver. And we also have the on-duty status. So you put on-duty status whenever you are at pickup, picking up a load, whenever you're delivering a load, whenever you're fueling up, whenever you drop or hook your trailer, whenever a DOT officer is doing an inspection. So every time you are under dispatch, so to say, working in your truck and you're not driving or taking a break, it needs to be on-duty status. It is extremely important that with every status change, you need to mark down what the status change is. Every time you put on duty status, you have to write in the remarks section what you are doing. Are you doing your PTI? Are you fueling up? Are you doing a pickup? Are you doing a delivery? We have some examples where in our previous video of a badly kept logbook, where you know every status change was not put down of what it was. So this is actually a violation and this will get you a citation. Remember, every time you change your status to any of the previously talked about points, you know, whether it is uh, you're doing on duty, off duty, sleeper, yard move, anything, you have to put in the remarks section. This brings us to uh, the final thing that, you know, at the end of each day, uh, working day you need to do is certifying your logs. At the end of each day, each driver needs to certify their logbooks. So you went home for the weekend, when you come back on Monday, you need to certify the days for, you know, Saturday, Sunday, before you can start your day on Monday. To conclude, if, if you do believe that we have missed something or that I have, you know, misspoken about something, please let me know down in the comments below. I, we want to make sure that we give out the proper uh, information out, not only to our drivers, but to drivers in general. And in one of our next videos, we will actually talk about the Omnitrax ELD and how you can use it. If you don't want to miss that, make sure you subscribe, like this video, ring the notification bell, and then I'll see you in the next one.